Hey everyone and welcome back to Scandalous Media. It's Angela here and a lot has been happening in the House of Windsor, especially when you have two sneaky exiled royals trying their hardest to capitalize on any pain because that to them is gain. Yes, I'm talking about Catherine, Princess of Wales, and the devastating news of her cancer diagnosis after the internet berated her for two months, demanding an explanation for her disappearance. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. Followed by Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, who have absolutely no shame when it comes to using any news from the royal family to get themselves in the headlines, and how the vile Sussex agenda runs deep. I'm going to take you through what led to the infamous Where is Kate Middleton hysteria, the announcement of Catherine's cancer, the Sussex vultures, Meghan and Harry jumping on the Catherine train, and so much more. As always, there are video chapters available. Get yourself comfy and cozy while I spill the tea. And speaking of getting comfy and cozy, be sure to check out the Scandalous Media merch store that's officially opened. You can go to scandalous.media shop or click the link in the description box. This OG drop is available for a limited time only and it features the already favorite This Is Reality hoodie, which includes a mix of things that people have asked us to talk about, so it's kind of like a personal quote of yours on a hoodie. The front design is of our iconic Tell All Sh logo, and you guys know that tea class is always in session when we're here, so you can grab yourselves the Scandalous Media University hoodie or t-shirt or enjoy a hot beverage in the new Scandalous media tea mug. I hope you guys like this collection so please tag us in anything you buy. We love you and enjoy. Be sure to like and subscribe for new videos each week and without further ado let's get into this drama and discuss just how low Meghan and Harry will go. The Kate Middleton Hysteria A Timeline I've made a few shorts about this, but to catch you up to speed, it was announced that Catherine was to undergo a planned abdominal surgery in January and she would be out for recovery until Easter. About a month or so after that was announced, the Kate Middleton hysteria began sparking a Where is Kate Middleton campaign on social media. A lot of people blamed the Sussex squad for this considering they spread a lot of vile rumors about Catherine, which unlike criticism about Meghan, was based on no factual evidence. This caught the eye of the general public who in my decade-long experience on social media notes that once the general public is involved, the story can't be contained. The general public refers to anyone who isn't part of a niche community because they are part of the greater majority. For example, sometimes a song can be ultra successful, not because of the fan base, but because the general public or the greater majority are on board, which is why sometimes celebrities have a hard time recreating a successful song since it wasn't their fans who necessarily had the impact. This is relevant because when they jumped on board, the story exploded. And it doesn't take much for the general public to be intrigued. Suddenly, the disappearance of Catherine was met with jokes about her getting a BBL, a facelift, working at the failed Willy Wonka event, and so much more. They didn't even know her name was Catherine, so I saw multiple viral tweets of everyone being shocked that her name is Catherine and not Kate, and then claiming that the royal family uses Kate to abuse her in some sort, even though they don't refer to her as Kate, that's just the media and most notably Harry and Meghan, which I'll discuss more in their statement about Catherine's cancer. And if I refer to her as Kate, it's simply for general public recognition. Now everything was worsened by the Mother's Day photo which featured a few editing mistakes such as Catherine's blurred hand, the random sharp lines, but most notably the editing of Charlotte's skirt which overlapped. Catherine took the heat for it on social media saying she's an amateur editor which I need you guys' thoughts. Do you think that it was Catherine editing the photo or what? That made everything worse because the general public started making theories up that she's dead and everyone demanded to see her holding a picture of the daily paper with the date on it. Personally, I didn't think the Photoshop scandal was that deep. I've been talking about celebs for over a decade, and the amount of magazine shoots, album covers, photo shoots, Instagram pictures, or even paparazzi photos that were heavily edited and facetuned has become so normalized. So many celebrities would pose for like Teen Vogue, for example, and would look like completely different people. And this was even popularized by the Kardashians, which is interesting since Kim Kardashian posted a gonna go look for Kate picture. Harry and Meghan are only king and queen of one thing, and that is notably photoshopping their photos, going as far as planting a full head of hair on Harry, or editing Meghan's features drastically. And yet their mouthpieces Omid Scoby, Christopher Boozy, and Missan Harriman couldn't wait to jump at Catherine's throat, which I'll get to in a moment. Anyway, unlike the bizarre general public, I knew William didn't do anything to Catherine, and I knew that Catherine wasn't dead, and I looked at the Photoshop picture as maybe Charlotte was edited closer into the photo. Maybe she was standing at a weird angle, because I've seen wedding photo editors show these exact things that people want to fix in Photoshop on TikTok. But no, everyone was convinced it was AI and that Catherine's face was actually Photoshopped in from an old magazine cover she did years ago. It was insane. It was literally a Kate Middleton hysteria and the media reacted in bizarre ways, pulling the photo from the archive. 
Then William and Catherine were spotted shopping at the Windsor farm shop and at first the story was released by the Sun but there were no photos or videos so the general public was like what are they distracting us from? Only for a person in the parking lot to have recorded them walking out and it was later sent to TMZ. People were okay for a solid five minutes before everyone started saying that is her body double. Claiming that she's walking too fast, Catherine is not that tall, why is she holding heavy bags after a surgery, that's not her face, and so on. Even the person who took the video had to come out and say, hey, leave her alone, that was her, I saw her with my own eyes. So the public was not happy by the palace's statement that she would be out until Easter. Then again when they told Page Six that she's fine after the speculation started. Then again after she was seen in the car with her mom. Then again after she was seen in the car with William. Then again after the Mother's Day photo. Then again after the Windsor Farm Shop outing. All of this led us to a very emotional video of Catherine being forced to explain her cancer diagnosis. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. Catherine's cancer. The royal family has never done anything like this. They usually release a statement and that's it. But the fact that Catherine was forced to explain something that is fairly still new to her and her family is heartbreaking. People on the internet can be vultures and Catherine isn't often looking for attention like her sister-in-law, which I'll get to in a moment. She genuinely wanted privacy, but I guess she underestimated just how popular she is, despite the efforts of Harry and Meghan trying to convince us otherwise on Netflix. When someone who's marrying in who should be a supporting, a supporting act is then stealing the limelight or is doing the job better than the person who was born to do this. The media are the ones who choose who to put on the front page. On the front page of the Telegraph. Megan. I went, oh my God. <laughs> Nonetheless, it was messed up and she deserves an apology for the way people berated her, forcing her to reveal something private. And something new, like they just found the cancer. It's not something that they've been keeping a secret for a year. In my personal life, I don't go around sharing health news with all my friends, let alone the entire world. But people are vultures. Speaking of vultures, let's talk about Harry and Meghan and how they literally have no shame. The Sussex Vultures So I've spoken about how Harry and Meghan are always using the royal family as a means to put themselves in the headlines if it's not for one of their flop projects, but as of lately, they do it so shamelessly. I spoke about this in my video about them stooping lower, where when King Charles's cancer was announced, Harry couldn't wait to announce literally five minutes later that he was planning on going to see him. For someone who has such a bad case of privacy, he sure couldn't wait to share his travel plans. This time around, they have their mouthpieces saying to us what they want us to know. They used Omid Scobie to speak for them in Finding Freedom, going as far as to brief him and Carolyn Durand on what to say as exposed in court, despite Meghan lying and saying she didn't give them info. They used a bunch of mouthpieces on Netflix to say the things that Meghan and Harry didn't have the backbone to say, but they still wanted out there. And Meghan has been playing this dirty game the second she married into the royal family, when she used her five friends to sell People magazine an exclusive, something they tried to convince us on Netflix was done by their own good merit, and not because Meghan put them up to it. Sure, Jan. And now we have the worst of the bunch, Christopher Boozy, who was featured on Netflix, which confirmed a months long rumor that he was in cahoots with Meghan and Harry as he was spewing absolute BS and fake stats on Twitter leading up to the Netflix special. I dragged him in my Netflix coverage because he tried to convince people there's some planned conspiracy about Meghan where people meet up to plot what photos they're going to release of Meghan and what stories they're going to spread. Yes, this was said on no factual basis, just delusions which sounded like fan fiction. I bet that Meghan would do anything to get the reaction that Catherine got simply based on her disappearance. So what does Boozy do? He goes online to spew insane narratives about William having done something to Catherine, or Catherine hurting herself and them possibly divorcing by next year, only for Catherine to announce her cancer. The latest article that mentioned that she wanted to step down from her royal duties and William is so upset about it. Yeah, I, I saw that. Um, I don't like. Let me let me just say this, and I got to be careful. You know, William at the end of the day is a human being, and just because he ro he's royalty doesn't mean that you know he can't do things um, that would would be very embarrassing. And I don't know what their what their relationship is, their marriage is, and I don't know if William did something to Kate or not, or if Kate did something to herself. I don't know what the f that was. The fact that that came out and other things is coming out as well 
and you know the British media is kind of walking up to that line and you know they're they're, they're hinting at you don't like m member you know the, you know they're they're, they're hinting at <laughs> I don't think I don't like let me let me just say this and I got he has absolutely no ties to the royal family for him to even have a lick of information I don't know what their what their relationship is their marriage is and I don't know but what ties does he have Harry and Meghan am I supposed to believe that it wasn't Meghan feeding him those stories the same way she fed Harry some preschool story of Catherine not sharing her lip gloss which Harry embarrassingly wrote about in spare I'm sorry but what he's accusing William and Catherine of is insane Borderline craziness, and it makes me feel like it's Megan gossiping to him about her sister-in-law and brother-in-law. Where else would he be getting it from? Am I supposed to take Boozy as a respected source when he was out here analyzing and partaking in the actual conspiracy against Catherine? He literally jumped on the Catherine saga, saying that the video doesn't look like the real Kate, and why is her face slimmer than that from earlier in the month, why is she walking so fast, and so on. Didn't Megan just go on a whole tangent on social media about women and how women are assessed and all of that? I'm sure talking about women's physical features and maybe if she was bloated one day or slimmer the next day would be a no-no, but here they are. We have a responsibility in all of that. Why are you sharing it with your friends? What if it was your friend or your mom or your daughter, you wouldn't do it? This isn't shocking though, since he's known to make fun of William and Catherine for many years and even targeted them on Harry and Meghan's Netflix special. These are the people that Meghan and Harry associate with, bring on to give a platform, all whilst Meghan complains about social media hate. We have a responsibility in all of that. When Meghan would disappear for months at a time, no one would question it, and no one cared. There was never a, where is Meghan Markle outbreak? And yet this is the same person trying to convince us that she gets hounded by paparazzi and can't catch a break, and there's all this hacking going on for her and her husband because they are so popular and more popular than the royal family who is out to get them. And yet, what do the facts show? All oh, right, Catherine disappearing from public eye launched an entire public investigation and garnered so much public interest even from top Hollywood celebrities that couldn't care for Meghan. And oh, the privacy leaks that Meghan and Harry accusing the royal family of doing to them is actually being done to Catherine. So they spent all this time trying to convince us that they're the victims when time only showed us that if anything, Catherine is the victim. Not to mention Omid Scobie who named King Charles and Catherine as the alleged royal racist in his book Endgame only to blame that scandal on the Dutch translators who were only doing their job which was translating the version that Omid indeed sent to them. What happened to Harry and Oprah claiming that he would never reveal those names? That conversation <laughs> I'm never going to share. Liar! If this isn't proof that Harry and Meghan spend their time gossiping to these people, then I don't know what is. Omid also tastelessly posted a screenshot of an alarm clock set for 6pm, the exact time Princess Catherine released her heartbreaking statement about her cancer. He also spent his time indulging in the conspiracy against Catherine, tweeting on Sunday, March 10th, wonder what it would be like if they had a good comms team following the Mother's Day photo backlash. In a separate tweet, he described the killing of the photo as mysterious, adding, no comment from KP yet? Moving on to Misson Harriman, also a close friend from Meghan, who found himself in hot fire about his photo that he took of Meghan and Harry in the midst of the Catherine drama. After the backlash, he shared the original photo with color, along with the metadata of the image, but conveniently left out the date, leading many to assume that the photo could have been taken the day of Archie's birthday party, where Meghan appears to be wearing something similar to the other photo. This backfired more on Misson and Megan as people dug in and started questioning if she was actually pregnant since she was supposedly drinking wine and preparing for Archie's birthday party at the time of the pregnancy photo. I don't think the announcement was the same day as Archie's birthday party, but then again, I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Anyway, Misson was talking a big game for someone who was on record saying, it's amazing what you can do with technology. Yeah, that virtual shooting, it's extraordinary what you can do with technology. And answering yes when the presenter asked him, they weren't actually under a willow tree, they were lying outside in a meadow, weren't they, Harry and Meghan, when you took the photograph of them? They weren't actually under a willow tree, but they were lying outside in a meadow, weren't they, Harry and Meghan, when you took the photograph of them? Yeah, they were lost in, in their love. At home, in their garden, comfortable, celebrating new joy. And then Misson proceeds to go on a whole tangent of being lost in their own bubble and yada yada yada. And mind you, he was asked about the willow tree because that's what was reported at the time of the photograph. Following the backlash, Misson claimed that it was a jacaranda tree. He also made a video response which seems like he took a page from Megan's book on how to throw someone else under the bus the way she did with Alison P. Davis in her Variety interview. 
because Masson blames the podcaster here on how he framed the question as opposed to his own actions, which is answering yes to the question. They weren't actually under a willow tree, but they were lying outside in a meadow, weren't they, Harry and Meghan, when you took the photograph? Yeah, they were lost in, in their love. Michael asked me a few leading questions in this interview. Some journalists do where they make a statement as fact and they hope you respond or add something to it. They weren't actually under a willow tree. Yeah, they were lost in, in their love. Mention of meadows and willow trees came out of the person doing the interview, not my mouth. They weren't actually under a willow tree. Yeah, they were lost in, in their love. Instead, Mislan goes on a whole tangent about how sometimes people ask him leading questions, especially when it comes to Harry and Meghan. So there's this blame on the podcaster and then admits to swerving to get back on track, or in other words, lead whatever agenda he wants. I did my best to ignore it and focus on what I wanted to talk about. Now, I never cared for the photo. I don't think I ever commented about it, but maybe Masson should have also not spoken so much about the photo when he is on record for altering the photo in some way, because people pointed the finger back at him. After Team Sussex was getting their laughs in about Catherine, the boomerang shot back as Prince Archie's official christening photo has been recalled by Getty, who said that the portrait had been digitally enhanced despite it being unclear as to why. This whole photo scandal is getting quite ridiculous and I didn't see this outrage for Harry for constantly photoshopping a full head of hair or for Meghan and Harry walking an empty stroller on Netflix. But aside from all of that, all professional photo shoots are touched up in some way. It's not that deep. Meghan and Harry's statement. I'm sorry, but it is so funny how Meghan and Harry are still cosplaying as important royals who people are waiting on to release press statements because it's A, trashy when they do it considering they're spilling to a magazine and B, no one asked. After everything I just ran through, Omid Scobie using Catherine's cancer as gossip, Boozy alleging that William did something to Catherine or that Catherine harmed herself and that they will divorce, Meghan and Harry framing the royals as racist on Oprah and then having their friend write the names of Charles and Catherine, and so much more, especially after everything that Omid and Boozy have done throughout the years to perpetuate the same harmful rhetoric that Meghan claims is perpetuated against her, these two have the audacity to release a statement about Catherine. Right after the video Catherine posted about her cancer, of course these two had to jump on the train and in a statement with People Magazine, they said, We wish health and healing for Kate and the family and hope they are able to do so privately and in peace. Shut up! You don't have a career! Shut up! Be quiet! Yep, that's it. One line where they refer to Catherine as Kate, knowing very well that she goes by Catherine and only the media calls her Kate. They said the most surface level statement that after everything they've spewed against her, it's hard to believe that the statement isn't backhanded and that it wasn't just done for media attention. Something to latch their names on after all, huh? One Twitter user wrote, I can't imagine how ghastly it would be to have a sibling who communicates via press release. And if you need more proof that they use Catherine for publicity, aside from the obvious two-faced behavior, Chris Shipp from ITV tweeted, Prince Harry has reached out to his brother, Prince William, after learning of Kate's cancer. Harry and Meghan have both been in touch with their brother slash sister-in-law, but did so privately. It's not clear if that was a phone slash video call or some messages of support. Is Harry and Meghan's version of privacy contacting the press to let them know they reached out privately? Just like they let the press know that Harry was hopping on a plane to see his father five minutes after Charles' cancer was made public. Oh, and look who was hanging around for the Invictus Games. Chris Ship. It's funny how the people that are always spewing their rhetoric in the media are also the same people so clearly on their payroll. Once again, a practice they accuse the royal family of doing to them on Netflix, yet they do. And that brings us to my second to last point, the debut of Meghan's lifestyle brand, American Riviera Orchard. A mouthful. So Megan debuted her new lifestyle brand with a new Instagram account that didn't tell us anything about the brand itself, but a trademark application gave away that she plans to sell cookbooks and home goods. Which is so weird because she has never been affiliated with cooking or home stuff. But get this, the filing lists everything imaginable that one person can sell. Holiday cards, to party ornaments, to tote bags, to pet collars, literally anything. It seems like the description fits one of a department store and it screams cash grab. The fact that she's trying to sell this idea of an exquisite lifestyle when really it's random merch is hilarious. But even worse, she managed to launch this at the height of the Catherine conspiracy when randoms were trying to bring up Harry and Meghan's name somehow, so the timing isn't random for sure. There's also no coincidence that she launched this the same day, actually the same hour as the Diana Legacy Awards in London, at the height of the Catherine hysteria. She posted this random teaser of her cooking and frolicking around in her house in some big gown. 
The name is not original either as there is an American Riviera Bank, so all she did was drop bank and add orchard at the end. She also used a song about moving forward and letting go, which is funny because she made sure to add Duchess to her Instagram brand bio, so that does not seem like someone who's trying to move forward. The late queen's fear was always royal names being used to be monetized for personal gain, which is why she originally blocked Harry and Meghan from trademarking anything in 2020, but like an insect who can't be killed, here we have this random name to start up Meghan's new venture as an Instagram influencer. She spent the last four years trying to market herself as a feminist champion for women's rights, and yet here she is, about to debut the launch of some kitchen gear. This seems like another quick attempt to make some money following Spotify dropping them, and Netflix rumored to do the same. Now, Megan has been teasing this Instagram return since the summer of 2022, where she originally told Alison P. Davis, the writer behind the infamous Cut interview, that she was returning to the platform. But things blew up in Megan's face as Queen Elizabeth passed away shortly after the interview, and Harry and Meghan released their controversial Netflix series where they attacked the same family that they're using for monetary purposes now. Isn't it hilarious? She is now being accused of copying Gwyneth Paltrow's brand, down to the small detail of cutting lemons. In the video, Gwyneth is also seen cooking in a kitchen with a very similar backdrop to Meghan's ad. I don't think Gwyneth had Meghan copying me on her bingo card when they went out for sushi together. Gwyneth also recently expressed how annoyed she was when Kourtney Kardashian first launched Poosh, saying, I was so upset when Poosh was launched and people were like, this is a ripoff of Goop. But she went on to say that people shouldn't be pitted against each other and she ended up collabing with Kourtney later, which I feel like wouldn't have happened if Kourtney didn't differentiate Poosh from Goop. But that's that cash grab. Now let's end the video on one main point. Megan and Catherine are not the same. People that don't know anything about the drama that Harry and Meghan have caused and believe that Harry and Meghan were victims started attacking Catherine saying, no one respected Meghan's privacy, why should we respect Catherine's? And it's like, y'all want Meghan to be the new coming of Princess Diana so bad, but it makes everyone mad that Catherine is more similar to Diana, who gave a speech in 1993 about stepping back from royal duties for the sake of her health, and she begged to be allowed the time to do so. The press said no, just like with Catherine. At the end of this year, when I've completed my diary of official engagements, I will be reducing the extent of the public life I've led so far of combining a meaningful public role with hopefully a more private life. This isn't the same as Meghan going on Oprah and calling the royal family racist and then going on Netflix to gossip about them for six hours. That's a different definition of privacy. That, we call here in my profession, is an attention-seeking celebrity. Or as Spotify labels it, a grifter. People said that the royal family didn't handle it well. Um, I think the people didn't handle it well. There's a difference. Because we were told that Catherine had surgery, we were given a timeline, and we were asked to respect her privacy. Being upset by not being important enough for more information is a personal problem, and as someone who covers Hollywood celebrities, it was heartbreaking for everyone to make fun of Chadwick Boseman and call him a drug addict because he didn't explain his changing appearance, only for it to be announced after his death that he was struggling with cancer. Meghan and Harry and their supporters like to hide behind this facade that they are victims, and how come no one cares when something happens to them? And it's like, you guys in the royal family aren't equal. You guys get hate because you spew hate. You reap what you sow. Am I supposed to look at everything they've done in the past four years and pretend like them making a living off of crapping on the royal family is somehow similar to Catherine doing her duty as a public servant, but also asking for some humanity as she battles something as strong as cancer? You don't go gossiping about high profile family and then get shocked when you get hate in return. Well, that's all for this video. I'm sending love and prayers to Catherine, and I hope that Meghan and Harry can heal their deeply rooted grifter mindset and hateful vendetta against the family that brought them to where they are today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe for more. Check out the Scandalous Media merch store, follow us on our social media, and as always, I'll see you next time.